here we have the components. Magnusine, Magnum series, 4400 watt pure sine wave inverter. It's 48 volts. So, and it allows us not only to stack another one on top of this, piggyback them, but also allows us to take two 120 volt outputs um, we've put these two 30 amp breakers on here each one is 120 volts so it's a dual breaker it allows for 240 to be energized onto this service panel and at the moment we have all of this connected on the top lug to this and that's USE2 the solar comes into the house underground in conduit and up in to these two which is 100 amp dual breakers. And then, all right, let me explain these connections here. Um, looks like there's some cobwebs from a year of not looking at it. But here we have the DC positive and DC negative coming in on big one aught cables from the e-panel which is an advanced power e-panel you can get them from advancedpower.net talk to Greg, he's a great guy so they come into the inverter the inverter converts them to AC and that is actually done I'll take this off in a second so you can see. So this is where the AC is outputted on two hot lines of 120 volts and two neutrals combined and then that ground wire down below. And gone through this conduit, it's a flex conduit, a flex tight they call it, and goes into the box from there safely with all the bushings necessary. This right here, as you can see, says remote. We wired that back behind the board, drilled out, cut out a little spot for it. And that's telling us that what it's inverting. We're not drawing any amps, but it's at 55.2 volts at the moment. And that tells us our battery voltage as well, typically. Now, this other wire, if you can see it, familiar green wire, is where we grounded the inverter. Now, we've taken that back into the E panel. Now, in there, we've grounded everything on a neutral grounding block. Um, the neutral bonding block turns into the neutral to ground bond and there should only be one of them importantly in your system and from that neutral to ground bond we take it actually on this copper exposed wire all the way down the side here There's a lot of stuff in the way right now, but right outside comes on this four gauge wire into this. This is a grounding rod and it goes 
seven more feet under the ground than you see. It's for grounding out your entire system in case of a lightning strike. This here, that's connected, is a grounding rod clamp and it tightens down with these screws here, tightens onto this wire that is uh, grounding back to the entire solar system. There it is, the entry into the house. This last gray wire here is a battery temperature sensor and uh, it goes down into the battery box and attaches right there. That gives us a general reading of battery temperature. There are other options if you want to add stack port or a magnum net. All right, let's talk about the Flexmax by Outback. It's an FM80 model, it means it's an 80 amp Flexmax version. And it's a great charge controller. Here we have the readings on it. Let me illuminate this if possible. So this is from the solar array in 86.23 volts at 11 0.89 amps. It's about a thousand watts. Now the out is what this charge controller is putting into the batteries. It's currently putting 56 volts which is where the battery level is at currently and maximizing the amperage it can do that with and that would increase it to 17.9 amps that's where the maximum power point tracking comes in. It lowers the voltage to the battery. So it's just above the battery voltage and it's filling the batteries. But it's increasing how fast it's doing that with the amperage, the pressure that is putting put into that. So we have this next reading below. That's the solar production of the panels at the exact moment. The sun's just rising right now. It's 9.30 in the morning. This is kilowatts per hour. It's the cumulative amount of energy collected in the day. Auxiliary mode is options that we're not using. They're off. This is saying that the maximum power point tracking is on. It's in bulk charge mode. It's charging the batteries at the moment from everything that was used last night. Uh, but yeah, it's in great shape, it looks like. Um, still going strong. Haven't had to do any maintenance on this whole system since the initial on switch. So that's pretty good. I'm actually in surprised that it's so maintenance free. And here's a quick look inside. We have positive and negative battery cables on the right, the green uh, is the ground, the middle wire is the positive PV from the solar, the PV negative is on the neutral grounding bar, and that telephone green wire is another battery temperature sensor. Here's what the wiring looks like inside the enclosure. From the top the solar comes in off the combiner box into a 20 amp breaker on the right, and then the neutral comes down to the neutral bus bar along with the ground. From the 20 amp breaker on the right, that red wire goes into the charge controller on the right. And from there, we have two wires coming out of the charge controller. One is a neutral that grounds on the neutral bus bar, the other is a positive. And it goes to another switch you can see on the bottom right. 
is actually a ground wire, that green one, going from the charge controller to the neutral grounded bus bar as well. Now on the bottom of the switch on the right, there's a wire that comes up and meets the positive of the battery and they're actually piggybacked on that 175 volt switch allows us to isolate the charge controller from the battery and then from there it goes into the inverter some of you have asked for a schematic of how my system was set up um, this is a typical off-grid system schematic it's very simple um, these are different strings of panels connected to this combiner box the neutral is all taken to one bus bar that's the white and the hot lines are coming through on breakers and being combined <clears throat> from there it goes down to the charge controller and the charge controller goes into the E panel the enclosure panel and uh, into the batteries to charge the batteries from the batteries we go into the inverter convert the DC power to AC power and then from the inverter onto whatever AC service we need 